Today I'm going to be showing you a wet balayage technique. As you can see here, she's quite a bit grown out. And what we're going to be doing is creating a really nice blend to the root with lightener and going over it with a red tone so that it almost looks like an all over red. So what I did is I just took her back to the sink. I didn't cleanse her. I just took her back there and I rinsed her out and got her hair nice and damp to start the process. It's going to create the perfect blend for us. I'm going in with two scoops of Pulp Riot Clay Lightener, and then I'm gonna go in with two scoops of Blonde AF, which is their traditional lightener. Actually, I used a scoop and a half of the Blonde AF. And then you just mix it to the consistency that you like, but I like it somewhere between, so a little bit thicker than I would do in foils and a little bit thinner than I would do typically open air. So I'm creating a creamy consistency. Now I'm going in with a little bit of Brazilian Bond Builder just to protect her hair. Um, I'm not lifting too much of her hair, but just in case any of it gets on her already lightened ends, I want to make sure that I don't add damage to those. There's not going to be a ton of heat conduction because we're doing it open air, but we still want to be careful. I'm trying to show you the consistency a little bit that I'm maintaining. So I've made sort of a V in the back. I've got two sections up in the front here, just split kind of down the middle, but not so perfectly. And then I've made a V section in the back. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna be going in and kind of detailing the hairline. So you wanna make sure that you have really good tension. And this is actually a very forgiving technique. So you don't have to worry about it being too perfect, but I'm going in first and I am just blending away from the face, taking that lightener away from the face. And I'm not going all the way to the root, but close. And then I'm gonna catch the other side and just go in and gently blend that away from the face. And again, this is a very forgiving technique. You wanna make sure that you are using very, very light pressure when you paint though. So just make sure that you're not pressing too hard on the brush. Otherwise it is, you know, you have more of a potential of making it spotty. But if you're just very gentle on either side of the hair, then you won't make it spotty. So here you could even see a little bit better how I am going in and detailing that hairline very, very gently, but I've got strong tension. Just use my finger to wipe that up. It's not the neatest technique, but like I said, it's extremely forgiving. And I'm taking another V over here. Now you don't want it to be too perfect with the sectioning. Just You just wanna get the general shape. And I get the back end of the section again. So this gentle blend up to the root is gonna create a look where it almost looks like once we put the red on, like it's an all over red, but it's got the ever so slightest shadow. It's gonna grow out beautifully and you're not putting bleach on their roots. So you don't have to worry about scalp burning or anything like that. And it, this is gonna give me just the perfect level of lift that I need as well. So you see me here, I am painting the underneath. 
if you get any on other sections of the hair, it's okay. Just use your fingers and kind of just wipe it up. And over here, she has no blonde on her end, so I'm going all the way down with the color. On her already blonde parts, I'm desperately trying not to overlap. Now I, I am going to go in again, and I'm just taking a straight section. So you want it all to kind of work together like a puzzle. This is the Pink Pewter Never Let Go comb, and I'm just using it to smooth the shaft of the hair that I have. So I'm painting underneath, naturally blocking it with my arm like I always do. Still trying to figure out a way not to do that. But you saw me do it on the other section, so you know exactly what happened. And again, guys, I'm just tapping so, so gently. Make sure you really saturate, too. Now I'm taking the tail of my never let go comb and I'm just gently picking that up. It'll kind of keep it away from the other sections. Now this is getting a little repetitive, of course. So, you know, I always like to go in and speed it up a little bit when it starts to be that way. So I took another V. Creating that really nice gradient blend going in and popping it up just like that with the tail of my comb. You really wanna make sure that you've got strong tension. Ask them to fight your tension. Um, that's what I do. I'm like, put your head down. If you feel me pull, pull against me. That's really important to make sure that you're telling your clients that and that you're keeping it at the right elevation. Now at this point, I am avoiding the ends. And you'll also see me go in and use my finger to blend upward a little bit. Now, with that being said, you don't want your hands getting all dirty, so make sure that you go in and you have a towel with you at all times that you can just wipe your hands on throughout when you go from section to section. Now, I went in and I took another straight section, blending in the back, and then keeping my tension strong, trying not to overlap on those ends, and just blending it upward toward the root. You guys, like this look has saved my life so many times when it comes to redheads. And, you know, people might say, why not just put it over her existing hair? Well, she's really dark. She's a level four. If I put a red over that, you know, it's going to be completely uneven. I'm going to get warmer roots. I'm. It's not going to be as vibrant. So that's why I do it this way instead so that it stays nice and vibrant for me. And I went in and I took another V section. So you'll see this is all working together like a puzzle piece now. I'm going in and I am taking a straight section again and I'm gonna paint the back side of it first. Keep really strong tension as I do that. Keep it nice and neat. And then I'm gonna paint the other side. Keep my tension strong. Don't overlap the existing blonde. and gently use my finger. Now I'm just popping that up again so it doesn't get onto the next section. And now I'm taking another straight section. I'm done with my Vs at this point. You guys, this is such a great forgiving technique and it creates the most beautiful blend. It really, really does. Like I cannot wait to show you the finished result. And just so you know, I'm using 
uh, 20 volume on the whole head. I really only need this new growth to lift to a level seven in order to get that vibrant red that I'm working on. Now that I'm up at the crown of the head, this is going to be my last section in the back. Moving on to the side, I'm going to block the screen so that you can't see what I'm doing whatsoever. No, I'm just kidding, kind of. I'm going in and I took a little straight section there. And you'll see I left out some pieces in the front, but I'm really making sure to saturate here. I'm so sorry for blocking the screen. I promise I get out of the way any second now. Yeah, Nikki, watch, move to the side. Good job, good job, Nikki, awesome. So I'm going in there and I'm painting. I'm taking just horizontal sections and I'm repeating what I did in the back. I'm just kind of popping that in. So you'll see here that I ever so slightly switched it to a diagonal. So I just kind of, you know, just a little bit so that it's not perfectly horizontal. And I'll work my way up that way all the way to the top of the head. I'm going to go right up to that part line. And I'm saving the front for last. Those pieces lift really, really quickly up in the front, as is always the case. So again, I've got, I'm at an ever so slight diagonal. I'm going in and I'm painting the underneath, keeping strong tension. I'm kind of pinching the ends of the section here. And just blending. So now I'm going in and I'm really detailing those front pieces. I left out about an inch and a half in the front there of hair just around the part line. And I'm going in and I wanna make sure that I'm taking smaller sections up there and really giving that a lot of emphasis and thought and that I'm really detailing it properly. On the other side of the head, you'll be able to see me do this part better, but I'm going away from the face and I'm just getting in there and really making sure that I blend it really well. And I'm just taking smaller sections. You'll see, see I'm taking these little diagonal sections over here and just working them and, I, and then I pull them away from the face. And 
I really want to make sure that I'm saturating as well. So I'm going to be repeating on this side. And as you can see, it's easier for you to see what I'm doing on this side of the head than the other side of the head because I'm not blocking the screen. So I really want to make sure that I'm getting around that hairline here so that if she does wear her hair back, which is not really possible because it's short, so she doesn't, but if she were to pull it all back, that she would have that hair taken care of. It's important and shouldn't be overlooked. And now, if you wanna watch, you'll have a better view than you did on the other side of the head, but I'm going in and I'm just repeating those same exact steps on this side of the head. So definitely feel free, to, I, I, I wouldn't fast forward through this if I were you.
And now you have an even better view of what I'm doing up in the front, just detailing that inch and a half of hair that I left out. Because those would traditionally be our money pieces and you want them to be the brightest. But I really just want to make sure that, um, one, I'm working it away from her face and two, that I get a lot of saturation and coverage here. So I actually filled her hair first at the shampoo bowl um, and somehow that part got cut out, but I did film it, I promise. But what I filled her with was just a 7C, straight up 7C um, demi -per permanent and I let it sit for five minutes just to kind of fill in. Her ends were really light. Now the colors that I'm going in with is Pravana 5.66, which is red red, and I mixed it with their permanent color, which is scarlet red. And I'm just going, and that's zero lift developer that I'm using. Um, it's going to give us this nice deep red. And I put a little bit of 5.7 in there too. So it was equal parts. Um, it was equal points, parts 5.66 and scarlet red. So 20, 20 as far as grams go. And then I went in with five grams of 5.7, which is a five violet. Now this is gonna be a very, very vibrant color and I towel dried her well. And she's gonna get a beautiful, vibrant red. We're gonna let it sit here. I'm actually letting it sit for 35 minutes.
So first I'm applying the roots and then I'm going back in and doing the ends. And right now it looks like it's going to process really sheer, but you'll see as we work our way toward the back how it gets deeper and deeper. And if I would have just put this on her virgin hair, it would not have been nearly as vibrant as we're getting it. I'm using my Olivia Garden Eye Blend Brush to really make sure that I saturate because if you leave any pieces out and don't color them, it's going to look absolutely ridiculous. So you want to make sure that you're being really careful with that. So as I work my way toward the back of the head, make sure that you'll see me going in and double checking, making sure that I have every piece of hair covered. No man left behind, okay? Get in there. We were so obsessed with this red that we created and you can see as I go through it, it's perfectly blended, but you can ever so slightly see that depth at the root, that shadow that we created. It's going to grow out beautifully. I'm just uh, in love.